I'm lying on this. I already guys have like 10 though. Okay, church, we're gonna start. So it's okay if you want to keep eating, but uh, grab it and find a spot to sit in your book. And we're gonna stand and sing. Your book that help. Get the show on the road. We're going to start with Psalm 103. I will call upon the Lord. All right. So everybody seems very far away. Is everybody cool with this configuration? We feel like we're table, so nobody's down for that. We're good? All right. We'll keep it like COVID spacing. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, stand and sing Psalm 103. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies, I know the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted, and know the Lord Blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Oh, magnify the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I know the Lord. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. Know the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. Let us praise the Lord of Lords. Praise Him now and evermore. Praise the Father, Son, and the Spirit. Know the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock who left the God, and my salvation be exalted. I know the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock who left the God, and my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord. The Song 717, I'll be listening. <laughs> We're getting into the call of Abraham today, so these songs are very purposefully chosen. <laughs> All right, 717. You sure you want to do that? <laughs> so whatever key you're doing is what we're doing. <laughs> when the Savior calls, I will. When he calls for me, I will hear him. When the Savior calls, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Well, I'll be somewhere, somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Well, I'll be somewhere. somewhere
right, turn on over to 238. Here, my send me. So you gonna need that. There's what to do, there's work with every hand. A heart that cries for help comes, bring it through the land. Jesus calls the reaper. section of uh, thread kicking off and uh, getting into Abraham. Cindy's going to uh, do the first half of this discussion and then I will jump in. Um, well, why don't we start with a prayer, so let's bow our heads. <clears throat> Dearly Father, God, I thank you so much for today. Thank you for the weather that you've blessed us with, God, and the ability to worship anywhere. Yeah. Um, at any time, God, and um, help us to um, really have hearts that, that are grateful, that are worshipful today as we um, take time together to just recognize and acknowledge who you are and what you've done and what you continue to do in our lives every day. Uh, we love you and we pray this to your son in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so in today's lesson, we're going to begin a new section in our thread series called God's People Birthed, and we're going to be looking in uh, Genesis chapter 12, and you know, in the way that the book is uh, structured, this is kind of a hinge point, because up until this point, you know, we've been going through, you know, the creation story, and how God, you know, brought the chaos of the universe, and brought some order to it, um, you know, he created the earth, and uh, made it such that it can sustain life, so that we could live and all of the animals and can also live in this environment as well. And then, you know, he starts the story of humanity, you know, how, how we started, how we were created, um, and kind of the, the thing that is common to all of us, which is our desire to be our own gods <laughs> in our lives, you know, and we're all kind of jostling for that position. We all, there's things that we want, things that we desire, and not that they're bad things in and of themselves, but the way that we go after it is, is less than ideal. <laughs> and I think we see that demonstration every single day, right? Um, and then, you know, we 
we, we see just how little actions from individuals kind of turn into big ripples, mm -hmm. you know, that affect, you know, families, they affect tribes, they affect whole countries, until we get to the point where God said, okay, you know what, wait a minute, we need a reset. <laughs> yeah. I need to press the reset button here because it's getting a little out of control, and everything that everybody ever did was evil all the time. Now, that's kind of a, you know, parabolic, <laughs> like kind of, you know, hyperbolic way of saying that but um, you know it's true and we can you know that is demonstrated on a daily basis but there's also the hopeful story that you know just as evil actions can have big ripple effects really good actions also have the same yeah. kinds of effects mm -hmm. and they can be life-giving um, and so in chapter 12, you know, we zero in on one family, one family line that begins with, with Abraham, or Abram as he's known at this point of the story. And, you know, his life is far from perfect. You know, he's made lots of mistakes, even though he's called the father of faith and he's a model for, you know, that faithfulness and obedience to God and going after the call. You know, he still made a lot of decisions, you know, that were not life-giving, <laughs> um, got people in trouble, um, mainly the Egyptians in, in that story, but, um, but, you know, still God used him, and God chose him because of his willingness to listen, you know, his willingness to say that God is the one that needs to have a say in, in my life decisions. Um, you know, here we find the call to leave the past behind, yeah. and to move to a new place with God. So um, we first meet Abraham or Abram at, at the end of Genesis 11, and what we know from the story in the Bible that's written is that he is the son of Terah. He's one of three. Um, he's married to a woman, Sarai, who is barren. He lost one brother. Um, and then for reasons that are not really outlined specifically um, in the scriptures, they decide to make a move. Terah takes his family, takes Abraham and his wife, and also Lot, the son of the brother who passed away, and decided to move towards Canaan. But he stopped, they stopped at Haran, and they settled there, and that is where Terah dies. So um, we're going to start here in Genesis 12, verses 1 to 9, and if I could have somebody read that for us, that would be amazing. Damien. Yep. 1 through 9? 1 through 9, yeah. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you and I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing I will bless those who bless you uh, and him who dishonors you I will curse and in uh, you all the families of the earth shall be blessed so Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Har Haran. Uh, and Abram took uh, Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his son's, uh, brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people that they had acquired in Har Haran, and they set out to go to the land of Canaan. Uh, when they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at uh, Shechem, to the uh, Oak of M Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To you, offspring, I will give this land. So he built uh, there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there, he moved to the hill country on the uh, east of Bethel and pitched his tent. But Bethel on the west and uh, Ai, Ai on the east, and there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And, uh, and Abram journeyed on, still going towards uh, Megiddo. Thanks, Damien. So, um, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of, you know, go through some points to ponder from this passage. Uh, I'm not going to take very long here and just kind of making a little bit of points along the way and kind of getting us to really think about <clears throat> how we can really take God with us every day on our daily life. You know, so God calls Abram to move, which is the first thing that we see here. And Abram listened and obeyed. And anyone who's ever moved, has anybody moved <laughs> from apartments, from houses? <laughs> from cities, from countries. <laughs> um, anybody who's done that knows that moving is like one of the most stressful, <laughs> unpleasant things. Like, I mean, it's a good thing that we do, but I can't, like, I just remember when we moved up here, like it had, <laughs> it was done in like two trips. <laughs> it was supposed to be one. And it was supposed to be one, uh, cause we didn't, we didn't get a big enough crowd for ourselves. Um, yeah, it was very stressful. And the kids were like freaking out. Well, it was just Isabel at the time. And she was very clingy and like, yeah, it's not, it's just not easy. It's a lot of hassle, you know, <laughs> but within that, <laughs> and Abram has got a complicated, you know, situation. Um, he's got, he, He's got a lot of possessions. He acquired people. He acquired wealth. You know, um, a family member just passed away. Like, you know, th these are some huge life changes. And they say that you should probably only have like what yeah, one major, one, so one major event. Yeah, <laughs> he had multiple major events. Um, Sarai was barren, and like, you know, if you know anything about like kind of some of the, you know, kind of cultural like those really important pieces in your life, you know, in a, as an adult is to have kids, to carry on your legacy, you know, somebody who will inherit all of your things and, and carry and just be an extension of who you are, you know, um, for the men especially. And I think Abram had actually taken on that mantle as, as older son for his father. Um, but, you know, but that wasn't, that wasn't happening, you know, and, and yet, Aram, you know, is still faithful, and he believes this voice. Um, and he stepped out on faith, which is what we read about in Hebrews 11, verse 8. Um, God promised to make, promises to make him a great nation, and he will make his name great. So this is in direct contrast to the story we just had Jameson uh, talk about last week, which is the Tower of Babel. And their main um, objective was to make a name for themselves. And yet God says to Abram, you know, I, I'm going to make your name great, you know. Um, and he's saying, like, what you want is not a bad thing. Even what the people in Babel wanted was not a bad thing, but how they were going about it was just kind of out of control, you know. And, you know, God doesn't want to hold back on us, uh, but he knows that when we try to take things that we want, we end up hurting ourselves and the people around us. Um, it takes a lot of trust on our, our part to believe that God's perspective is higher than ours. And he knows how to grant our deepest core desires in a way that is life-giving for all. Um, you know, we think about the things that we want every day, like we want to be rich, we want to have a lot of possessions, we want that relationship, you know, we want stability, um, you know, which in and of themselves are not that bad, but we have to remember that they're, they're kind of symbolic of some core needs that we have within ourselves, you know, and God knows how to grant that in a way um, that we couldn't, we couldn't imagine for ourselves, you know. Uh, he says, um, God pro uh, blah, 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 sorry. Um, God will take care of Abraham's friends and enemies. Like he, when he gets into like, you know, those who bless you, I will bless. Those who curse you, I will curse. Um, it's, it seems way more satisfying to try to uh, take matters in our own hands, right? Yeah. Uh, when it comes to issues of fairness, of justice, when we want to try and make things right for ourselves and for other people. You know, but in our limited perspectives and when we react out of a place of emotion, um, we tend to have our, our judgment gets very clouded yeah. and we don't always make the right decisions. Even if if our heart is in the right place, we just don't always know what's happening in the background, you know, um, and we don't always know what is the fix, you know, for certain situations in a way that doesn't like alienate some people, um, you know, or comes off very harshly. You know, but God has a way of like trying to redeem relationships and trying to redeem situations, but it's gonna be in a way that's not in our timing, 
not the way we want it to because nine times out of ten what we want to do is make people feel as bad as we do as bad as we did you know and it hurt the way that we did you know when they did things to us you know and that becomes really you know more about revenge then than about like really making things right um it says that all people will be blessed because of him you know many religions revere Abram as a as yeah. an example of faith you know okay. Christians, Jews, and Muslims all look to Abram as a model of obedience and belief as God as the one true God in a sea of polytheistic religions. Um, the other point is Abram was 75 years old when he set out, you know, it's, uh, you know, and it's never too late. We live in a very youth obsessed culture, um, you know, and older people might seem obsolete, you know, uh, and not needed. Um, and Abram probably had all the reasons in the world not to, you know, not to set out at this age, you know. Uh, I think at that age you're thinking you're probably pretty stable. Um, you know, things are even, you know, and you just don't want to upset the apple cart, you know. But Abram didn't take that. He was just like, you know what, all right, I get called. And um, I'm just going to go. And it doesn't matter that I'm 75 years old, you know. And I think that that's a very hopeful thing. Um, especially for some of us as we're moving into different phases of life, you know, and and your kids are growing up and they're starting to make decisions and maybe moving out, you know, and, uh, <laughs> um, you know, but there's, God is not done with you yet. God is not done with any one of us who are still breathing, right? God is still willing to use you. Are you willing to heed the call? Um, upon... His arrival, you know, in, in the land where the Canaanites were leaving, God promises a home for all of his offspring, um, and Abram builds an altar, taking God wherever he went, you know, and he made a few altars as he kind of traveled around the area. But it's a demonstration, too, of his trust in God and saying, like, okay, this is, this is going to be my land, this is going to be my kid's land someday, you know, I'm going to build an altar here um, to kind of make my mark and just to keep him, you know, close to me. And altars are not a thing that we built in America. Uh, that's, not, that's not a thing. We have some memorial plaques or whatever, but we don't consider them altars, right? Um, but some countries and cultures are very comfortable with the concept of having an altar somewhere. I know I grew up with a few shrines around my house. Um, my mom really loved her Catholic saints. Um, and, um, you know, but, but think about what is, what is really the purpose of an altar, you know? And in the Bible, they served as a memorial for those places where, you, where one had a personal encounter with God. Mm. Um, you know, they, they can connect us with their spiritual beliefs. They provide a physical representation of your inner world, you know, allowing you to deepen your connection with the divine. Um, it helps us to reflect on our intentions. You know, what are... You know, we can use the altar to contemplate goals, you know, and desires. Um, it's a quiet space for meditation and prayer. Um, you know, for, for Old Testament times, we could probably make, off they probably made offerings. I think they definitely made offerings. Um, you know, but sometimes they can be symbolic or tangible, you know, just as a, as a way to express devotion and gratitude. And I think it was important for Abram to have a physical reminder of God's promises and to maintain his connection with God. Um, life events and the period of waiting, you know, can, can kind of uh, put us off balance in terms of our faith and reliance on God. Um, and um, we need to find ways that, that will help us to keep that connection going, to keep the reminder that, you know, what we want from God, you know, is, might not happen tomorrow, it might not happen, next month or next year, but that we can trust that we are not forgotten. Mm -hmm. um, finding a way to come back into God's presence on a daily basis is crucial because God is never far from us, but we, in our perspective, we can forget that God is right there. Yeah. Um, and for us, we need to remember that an altar can be anywhere at any time, like right now. <laughs> We're having worship service outside, not in the building. <laughs> And which is fine and really good. And we're lucky in State College that we have lots of places that we can go to really just consider and contemplate God's creation. Yeah. It helps us to remind him how big he is, you know, and um, taking time to meditate on all that he's created and to develop a habit of gratitude. It keeps us grounded and focused. 
And as we practice this, this connection, we're able to be, to be able to hear God's whisper, you know, because God doesn't shout a lot. <laughs> well, sometimes he does. But it's not always that way. Sometimes it's a whisper. Sometimes it's a nudge, you know, in a direction. It's a movement within us that we can feel God leading us in a certain way on our daily walk. Some of my favorite ways is I do grounding exercises, you know, just, you know, five things I can see, four things I hear, three things I can touch, two things I smell, one thing I taste. It's, that's a way to just kind of get out of the stress of my daily life and just get in a place where I'm very present. And then I can go and say, okay, God, I'm grateful for this, you know, or I can like put my hand on my heart and say, and like remember scripture, just things that really help me to meditate on who God is. And that's just a practical here for you guys. Um, but yeah, I think that the story of Abram is very compelling. And for those reasons, um, it just teaches us a lot and teaches us a lot about taking God with us mm -hmm. wherever we go. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the thing we've been talking about this whole time we're going to continue with is worshiping on the way, right? The way Abraham just took God with him everywhere he went. It was every day, it was every place, you know, and, and I love that we're worshiping in the pavilion today. Yeah. I think even if the building was open, it would still come out here. It really <laughs> drives the point home that what makes a place a place of worship isn't that it's built a certain way, it looks a certain way, has a cross in the front, has a certain name on the door. The, place, the thing that makes a place a place of worship is the fact that you worship there. Right. That's it. <laughs> you know, it could be anywhere. You know what I mean? So, so that's all about just bringing God everywhere you go and uh, doing that every day. Um, so we're going to get, you know, maybe a little bit deeper, deeper or a little bit different uh, direction at this point. And we're going to jump ahead to Genesis 13 uh, to start there. Um, now, just to kind of help on the fast forward, um, we're not going to go through um, the story um, in beginning of 13, but essentially Abraham, Abram and Lot had separated, they parted ways after there was kind of some infighting, you know, between their shepherds, you know, Abram's like, look, you just pick the land you want, and I'll be somewhere else, and you know, we'll just kind of deconflict the whole situation, but it was a little tense for a little while, um, you know, Lot had settled near the fertile plains near Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, obviously before it was destroyed, um, but then God appears to him, let's pick it up in... Genesis 13, verse 14 to 18, um, at the end of that chapter. If anybody wants to read that for me, it'd be great. Okay. Anybody? Okay. Okay. Um, the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had parted from him, Lift up your eyes from where you are, and look north and south, east and west. All the land that you see, I will give to you, and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go, walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. So Abram moved his tents and went to live near the great trees of Mamre at Hebron, where he built an altar to the Lord. Cool, thanks. So he builds yet another altar to the Lord. And, and this is kind of a continuation of the series of promises that that God makes to, to Abram. And sitting here looking at each other, we're we're part of the fulfillment of that process of that promise, right? The idea of that, you know, his his offspring, not just physical offspring, but spiritual offspring, you know, we all trace our roots back to this point, um, is carried out throughout the New Testament and, and through today today. Um, so that's just kind of a cool thing that's going on there. Um, the promise is basically kind of outline, it's a rough outline of the rest of the Bible. Um, I'm not gonna kind of lay that all out here today, but but we will in the coming uh, sections here in the rest of Genesis. So uh, the idea in here is is to you know be present in peace and not cease. So we talked about praying every day, praying everywhere. Now we're talking about praying without ceasing. Mm -hmm. um, so Abram had just kind of gone through this this tense period. God saved him through that, and then he sets up this very reassuring, peaceful promise for for Abram. And, and what does he do? I mean, if you've gone through a tense time and then God saves you from it, like my tendency is to go like, okay, thanks, I got this. I'm good now for a while. Like, I'll let you know when I need you again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kind of a thing. And to just kind of, you know, not keep that, like, steady reliance on God, you know, desperate need for God no matter what, whether I feel that intense need or I don't. Um, Abram was different. Abram 
goes right back to worshiping God, sets up another altar, and does his thing, and worships God even when he's at peace. Now, it's interesting because Abram doesn't know it yet, but right around the corner, he's going to go to war to rescue Lot. Um, so it's, it's kind of a cool thing is these times of, you know, peace and consolation from God really just preparing you for the next thing. It's not like you're done, you've arrived, good job. It's like, okay, I got you through this. I'm going to strengthen you a bit because there's something even bigger coming, you know what I mean? So just kind of buckle up and be ready, right? Um, but it's cool that they praise without ceasing. Now, they kind of, um, I'm going to get into that a little bit later. Um, yeah, it's just kind of the idea of just really depending on God, you know, in, in all of those times when it's going well, when it's not going necessarily very well, um, but just taking him with you, you know, into, you know, different different situations that you're going to head into. Um, and there's some kind of some, some practical things. I mean, it just, I want you to just get thinking about some of those things, whether it's I'm heading into work and there's difficult difficult situations there, maybe I'm going to spend a little bit of time in prayer, praying for my coworkers, praying for those situations. Um, there's all kinds of good stuff, you know, in the thread app that, that we've, you know, been provided with, you know, conversation starters to, you know, have with your family, have with your kids, whatever. Um, maybe just going into the next, next conversation with your spouse, you know what I mean? Like praying a little bit, bringing God into that, not just trying to do that all on your own. Um, maybe, you know, we, who prays before our meals? Like we all probably do that, but we like bringing God into the conversation at the dinner table and talking about God, like during the meal. Just practical little things that we can kind of do um, to just bring God with us into those situations. Um, and then the next idea is going even a little bit deeper, is bringing God into your thought life. So this is kind of interesting, right? We're talking about time, every day, everywhere, different situations. But like bringing God into your thought life is kind of really, I think, where the rubber starts to really meet the road. Um, this is this kind of really you know, hits on that praying without ceasing idea, which is, you know, what Paul simply said in 1 Thessalonians 5.17. It just says, pray without ceasing. And that can be, you know, we've talked about this at various times, like, okay, so do I just quit my job and just sit there and pray out loud, like, 24 hours a day? Like, that's a little impractical, <laughs> right? Um, but, so it's probably not really what that means. You know, really what that's talking about is, you know, bringing God into your, into your thought life where, Rather than, you know, this just being kind of like me having a very self-focused monologue with God. God, give me this. God, help me with that. God, fix this problem. It's a two-way dialogue, you know, that, that's always going on. And um, it's not so much about, you know, what you're thinking about. It's more about who you're presenting those thoughts to. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's, it's the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever. The things where it's like, I don't even want to, you know, bring this to God. I want to compartmentalize this over here and think about it, maybe I'm not even going to let God know about that, as if he doesn't already, right? But just saying, here's what this is, here's this thought that I don't even think really fits in my spiritual life, but I'm going to bring that to God too, and just kind of, and maybe even talk about it with somebody, you know what I mean? Maybe it's, it's something where you're like, I'm kind of embarrassed about this, I think I'm in sin, or something that I just don't really want to bring out in the open, but magical things happen when you kind of do bring that out to somebody, you know, talk to another disciple, whether it's you just share this thing, bounce it off them, maybe you're confessing it, whatever, um, but you're putting it out there and you're really surrendering that to God, you know, because we can kind of have those internal little things that's like, well, this is a compartment of my life that I don't show anybody and I don't even show it to God, right? And that becomes like another little altar of the wrong kind that's setting up a little bit of an idol where it's some portion of my life that I'm really not willing to submit to God, right? But if I can just open that out you know, put some light on it, you know, let, let God know that I know that he knows <laughs> what I'm thinking of. Um, that can really be addressed and can bring some healing into that, that area. Um, so that's kind of a, a big thing that I think we can, we can really focus on quite a bit that I know has definitely um, helped, helped me personally and just not, you know, not trying to, I mean, it's, it's our tendency to compartmentalize our life. And that's really kind of the, one of the big ideas about this whole talk today is, decompartmentalizing your life, right? It's not like, well, I only go to church on Sundays. Oh, I only really worship on Sundays. No, that's got to be kind of a manifestation of what's going on throughout the week. And I don't always do it in that building over there, but I do it everywhere I go. Or I don't only, you know, worship God when I need help, but even when I think I don't, you know. And, you know, there's no thoughts that I really, you know, 
uh, set aside where it's like, I don't let God see those. You know, you got to kind of live that out loud. Um, so hopefully those thoughts are pretty helpful. Um, we're going to kind of bring it in for a landing a little bit. But, but you know, just kind of an ending thought on this is really just, you know, taking worship, taking our worship out of its box. Uh, we don't need to, you know, physically construct altars, you know, but our lives can be altered forever by worshiping on the way, everywhere we go, every day. All right? Uh, so we're going to pray, and then we're going to uh, have a song and a communion. Uh, dear God, just uh, thank you for uh, giving us uh, Abram's example, God. His faith, uh, God, his courage to answer the call. Mm -hmm. And uh, just the way that uh, he bucked the tide of what was going on around him with, you know, worship all kinds of gods, but just worshiped you and took you wherever he went, God. And took him, uh, built an altar where he traveled, God, and uh, he made his home a place of worship, God. He didn't restrict it to certain times or situations, God, but brought you with him everywhere. He gave us a great example. And, and you blessed him, and that we uh, are the living manifestation of part of that blessing, God. We're grateful for that example. Mm -hmm. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to sing one song, and we'll do the communion. So it's going to be 440, Sanctuary. sanctuary, like a, a holy place set aside for the Holy Spirit, right? That's, that's what that was about. Um, we're just going to look for, for a minute um, over in uh, the Gospel of John. 
And John is kind of cool. I mean, um, in the, <clears throat> the events of the Last Supper, that Thursday night, um, the night Jesus was betrayed, where communion was instituted, there's like, John has several, several chapters of discussion of what, you know, what Jesus was talking about with the disciples, what he prayed about. And through chapters 14 to 15 and 16, uh, three different times, um, Jesus tells them about the counselor that's coming, the Holy Spirit, right, that he was going to provide. So I'm just going to read those for you. First is John 14, 26. It says, But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. John 15, 26. When the counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you must also testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. John 16, 7. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Now it's just kind of cool, because we just kind of went through a whole thing about taking God with us, right? And that I can go somewhere, maybe I'll build an altar, whatever it is, but I'm going to take God with me everywhere I go. And I'm, I'm fully equipped to worship anywhere at any time. And this really doubles down on, the idea, on that idea, because like we are temples of the Holy Spirit. We know that, but Jesus is reminding us, like at that time, they didn't really have that. You know, we have something that was still on the way to coming for those disciples, uh, and that's the Holy Spirit. Um, but it's just cool that it's, I don't think it's coincidental, you know, really that, you know, we know that that Thursday at the Last Supper was where Jesus instituted communion, which we're about to partake in. And uh, he also predicted that he would send the counselor, the Holy Spirit who lives in us, and we really do actually, literally take God everywhere we go inside us. Um, so we're just going to take some time now. We'll take the elements. I want you to sit and meditate and pray on it for a little bit. I'm just going to do a little bit of prep here. Um, I have these maybe leavened, but we'll deal with it. Uh, some man bites for We don't have our usual little prepackaged awesome. Dear God, just, uh, thank you for this opportunity to uh, focus on the cross, God, and uh, to take the uh, the bread and the juice that represents Jesus' body and blood on the cross. In Jesus' name, pray. All right, guys, that concludes our communion time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a few announcements, and um, and then we will conclude with a song. And special birthday announcement maybe um but i um so it's in terms of uh well first of all just thank you the crinkles for that lesson i think it was a great reminder and um just i think the importance of like practicing god's presence because it is so easy to get compartmentalized and get just distracted honestly may is just an insane time of year especially if you have children <laughs> <laughs> or if you deal with graduations or you do anything. Um, <laughs> or if you live. Um, it, can, it can just get really chaotic. And so it can be easy. I know I found myself just feeling pulled in a lot of different directions and just missing my daily times with God. And uh, But just a reminder to like use opportunities, whether it's folding the laundry or whatever, the mundane, you know, to just connect with God and connect with others too. Um, so I appreciate that reminder. And, um, and also just a reminder to, to, to definitely utilize the Thread app because it really does help um, to follow the podcasts and the, the quiet times in terms of even just like the consistency and then the, the sermons. It all kind of, you know, it, it builds and there's, a, um, there's an enrichment there I think that we can gain when we, when we have that thread um, <laughs> woven throughout our, our week and our day. So, and the thread amongst each other, we have the same, we're, we're learning the same thing and studying the same things, which is cool. Um, but this week, this Wednesday, we will be at the Crinkle Home for our uh, family group midweek at seven. 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 Okay, at seven o'clock. Um, and that is the only announcement I have in terms of meeting us body. Next Sunday, we will be back in the building. <laughs> um, and uh, we will be having park services this summer, which is exciting over at Spring Creek Park, but I don't think those are gonna start till June. Um, 
So on a, on a somber note, I, I did want to go ahead and um, just alert you guys and, and also pray for um, a family. There, there was a middle schooler at Park Forest yeah. who uh, died last weekend by suicide and uh, she was in eighth grade. Her name was Abby Smith. Um, and I think it's a, an opportunity for us as a community to to wrap our arms around their family, whether it's through prayer. I, I'm, I'm going to look into ways we could potentially serve the family as well. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, they do live in Grace Wood, so. Um, but I also think um, it's an important thing to recognize that if anyone is is ever struggling with any thoughts of self harm, or if you know anyone who's struggling, know that. One, you can always, there's a 24-hour crisis hotline. You can call 988 and there will be someone to talk to you. Um, if you know someone who's struggling and who's in, in danger, call 911. That's the protocol. Um, but, um, but also, too, please know that we as a community want to support you. Know, you. And so um, know that you're not alone. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and close us in prayer, um, just for the service, but also for the uh, for the Smith family, and then um, Robinson. He will come up and do the last song. Um, God, our hearts are just go out to the Smith family right now. Is um, I know that they are mourning the loss of their daughter, and um, and for all those in our community who are affected by this, really challenging death, God, and I just really pray that they would feel your comfort in um, just abundant ways, God, that they would, uh, whether they know it's you or not, God, that they would, that they would feel and sense just the wrapping of arms around them, and, um, and I pray that we can be a comfort to each other, God, that we can comfort each other in our distress, and our lows, and our despair, um, and that we can help each other to not lose hope. Um, in this world because it can be hard at times and we all need reminders um, that this isn't it, God, that this is not the end. And God, thank you for this um, time to reflect on you and to reflect on Abraham and his faith and how he um, chose faith in the face of, um, of adversity, how he chose faith in the, in the face of really, you know, so many other religions and other gods and other potential opportunities and um, and I pray that we can imitate his faith and that we wouldn't that we wouldn't just grow comfortable but that we would continue to to put our hope in you and uh, God we love you we thank you for this time it's in your sons and we pray amen, amen. amen. all right so we're gonna stand and sing one more song <laughs> this whole deal taking the Lord with you wouldn't be complete without singing take the Lord with you, so we're going to have to do that. Uh, 733. It's like custom made for this lesson. It's great. Right. Oh, you know what? I'm starting to see this one. Three of the book upside down. <laughs> You gotta take the Lord with you, children, everywhere you go. You gotta take the Lord with you, children, everywhere you go. You gotta take the Lord with you, children, everywhere you go. In the street, in the streets, in the home, in the home, on the job, on the job.
Cupcakes, I'll retrieve right after oh, you say happy birthday. Oh.